If you own a Synology NAS that supports BTRFS, you must ensure that a data scrubbing schedule is set up. This tutorial will take a look at exactly what data scrubbing does, how it works, and how you can configure it. There are also written instructions in the description that will guide you through the process. Now in its simplest form, data scrubbing will check each copy of your data that exists, and if it doesn't match based on a checksum stored, the data will be corrected. Overall, this process confirms that data that hasn't been read recently isn't degrading, and if it is, it will automatically be fixed. So please keep in mind that this is an overly simplified explanation, but in general, you should run data scrubbing to ensure that your data doesn't corrupt or become unreadable due to bit rot. While it's not the most common thing, BTRFS and data scrubbing will ensure that issues that arise will be fixed and your data will be protected. So taking a step back, there are three things that you'll have to confirm. The first is that you're using a BTRFS file system, and if you're not and your NAS supports it, you should definitely consider switching over to that. The second is that your shared folders are set up properly because data checksums must be enabled in order for the data scrubbing process to work on those shared folders. And the last is that you'll have a data scrubbing schedule that will run periodically. So taking a look at the shared folder settings, you'll have to confirm that the shared folders that you already have that are set up have the enable data checksum for advanced data integrity option enabled. In order to get to that, you can open up the control panel and then you can use the drop down menu on the right hand side. And if you see it enabled for that shared folder, you'll know that it's set up properly. Now you're gonna to have to do that for every single shared folder that you have here. The thing that I wanna point out is that if it's disabled for whatever reason, you can't go in and enable it. So what you're actually gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to recreate a new shared folder and you're gonna to have to copy all of that data from that existing shared folder to the new shared folder. Now for shared folders that you'll be creating in the future, you have to ensure that that option will be enabled. So as you're going through the new folder setup, you'll have to confirm that the enable data checksum for advanced data integrity option is enabled, and this will ensure once again that the data scrubbing process will work. So now that you've confirmed that the shared folder is either set up properly or you've gone through and set it up properly, you have to ensure that the data scrubbing schedule is enabled. So what you can do is open up the storage manager, and then you can select storage pool. At the top, you're gonna to see schedule data scrubbing. When you enable that, you're gonna see a frequency setting here. Now this setting should be run at minimum at least every six months. Personally, I run it every three months, but as long as you're running it at least every six months, you should be fine. Now the thing that you have to keep in mind is that while it's gonna be going through and potentially repairing some of those issues that it finds, the process is going to take a little bit of time. So based on the total amount of storage that you have, it could potentially run upwards of say 24 to 48 hours. And during that time, you're almost certainly gonna see a performance degradation. So that's why a lot of people prefer running it every six months. You won't have that performance hit every three months, but you're ensuring that the data is checked on a regular basis. Now, if you're running BTRFS and you've never run a data scrubbing process yet, it's probably a good idea to run one now. So at the main storage manager page, you can select run now next to data scrubbing. And like I said earlier, it's definitely gonna take some time. So upwards of say 24 to 48 hours, that process will run. Any issues that it finds, it will automatically correct. And at that time, the schedule will kick in and you'll be ensuring that you're running this periodically, which is really all that you need to do. So this video isn't meant to scare you. It's just to let you know that data degradation does exist and Synology gives you tools to ensure that your data can be protected. So RAID is not a backup, and this process shouldn't replace your backups, but it's a great tool that you must ensure is running. This is also the main reason why I only recommend Synology devices that support BTRFS. Thanks so much for checking out the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. Thanks, guys.